episode four another day another opportunity first and foremost i want to give a big shout out to y'all the reception for episode three was absolutely amazing um and it it did exactly what i intended it was a polarizing episode that had a lot going on a lot of chaos and it number one focus on the league and not just my team i feel like when you're rebuilding and doing series with certain teams your team is such a focus that it can kind of get a little stale and boring for certain aspects because there is an NBA world that's still going on around the league and being zeroed in on one team can kind of be like, okay, you know what I mean? Enough is enough. What's, what's going on? So that was number one. The second thing was that it's trades. And anytime you have trades, whether they're fictional, whether they're in real life, there's always going to be a difference in opinions. And I welcome it. I, I understand basketball and how it works. Some people are going to love some things. Some people are not. Even in real life, you see a tra trade happen and one fan base is like, yes, this is exactly what we wanted. The other half of the fan base is like, man, I thought we could have got more or I think we overpaid or that was an oversale. And I want y'all to feel comfortable expressing yourselves. I always say I never feel a way when people um, have a disagreement with me, especially in these type of videos, as long as it's genuine. The moment I start to feel like people are just nitpicking and it's not genuine is where it can kind of get annoying. But in a video like that where all of those trades happen, I would have been shocked if there weren't anybody disagreeing. If everybody agreed, I'd have been like, yeah, this something's up. You know what I mean? And a lot of those trades I feel like were good and I liked. But there were a few that after y'all made y'all points, I was like, ugh, yeah, the Anthony Simons, I did kind of overpay for that. Uh, I, I could have. You know, the Jonathan Kaminga to the Spurs, uh, I did do the, the Warriors a little dirty there. That did. I, I shouldn't have did that. But the rest is where I'm like, I agree to disagree. I think the McHale one, I, I'm, I'm, I'm overpaying every time. If I'm the Thunder, I'm doing it every single time. But again, I give y'all a big shout out because the reception and the participation with all of the likes, the shares, the comments, the conversations, that's exactly what we want. This is, this is a place where all of that is welcome. And to see y'all get so excited about it as if it was something that really happened in real life, that was my whole goal. And to see it accomplished, boom. For this episode, this is probably going to be the biggest episode um, and the most important episode as far as the landscape and future of our team. So we got some decisions to make. Hopefully it's the right decisions. But as always, I appreciate y'all. Sit back, relax, grab y'all popcorn. Let's start the show. So here we are, February 10th. We're 24 and 28. Since the last time y'all saw me, I did play one video game or one game off of camera, which was against the Philadelphia 76ers and... I'm going to be real with y'all. This was an amazing win. As y'all can see, we went into overtime and we really dominated that overtime. Um, it was it was, it was was brilliant. I, there was a certain point, as you can see, they outscored us in that first quarter, 34 to 26. We got them back in the sec second quarter um, and we were just doing our thing the rest of the game. But it was playing catch up. We got so back far behind in that first quarter. I was getting a little frustrated and I was thinking to myself while playing, at a certain point, I'm like, yo, I, I, maybe Trey Young is not the answer. Maybe we are going to have to get rid of Trey Young at the in the offseason. Like, that was really my mindset. Tyrese Maxey, as you can see, he ended with 21 and 10, 7 to 20 shooting. But I wish there was some way I can show y'all, like, by quarter, the quarterly breakdown. Um, this dude, he, he lit us up in the first quarter. Like, out of the gate. They barely gave Joel the ball. He ended up with 26 and 11, but this is really like second half, fourth quarter, overtime type shit. Like, Maxi was lighting us up. He scored the first nine points for them. He had a three. He had an and one. The first play of the game, he ducked on the Kongwu. Tyrese Maxi is fast as hell in this game. And the player movement that uh, Sim Game and Network implements had him playing super, super fast. Nobody on our team could really stay in front of him and guard him. He was really doing his thing, and it... It, it had me considering what we were going to do with Trey Young. So now y'all see the finished product of Trey Young playing 47 minutes and having 41 points, 13 assists, five turnovers, and he shot the ball really well except from three again. And this was the problem. In that first half, I couldn't really get any shots to fall with him. But I was taking a lot of threes, and I'm just like, I can't generate shots. A lot of the shots he's getting and he's, he's attempting throughout our offense – He's getting contested on, and he's just so small that the shots that I feel like are open for a lot of other players, they're always some type of percentage of coverage on his shots. He's rarely getting legitimate wide open looks throughout the flow. And then in the second half, Jalen Johnson really got going. 
And the thing, the reason it was so good to get Jalen Johnson going is because it began to open up things for Trey Young. Trey Young started to get going. We started playing fast. He's hitting Jalen Johnson in transition. He was able to get Matisse Thibel some threes in transition because Matisse Thibel wasn't making anything um, off of our half court offense. But he started to really make his shots, hitting the wing, hitting the corner during the fast break transition looks. Brogdon struggled again. We really struggled as a team from three. But when Jalen Johnson got going and really took this game over, he was getting and ones, dunking. I mean, punishing Tobias Harris. He hit mid-range jumpers. He hit two big threes um, in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Just, just a straight dog. It really got Trey Young going. And what happened was Trey Young was able to get a lot of backdoor looks. He got the one three he did hit. He he was hot. He he had his badge or whatever. But it made me reconsider how we've been playing. So I think going forward, y'all will see. When we have game footage, I'm going to probably try to use Trey Young a little different. I cut the threes down. This is probably the least amount of threes I've ever shot with him since we started this series. And he still was one of six. He got to that free throw line. These these twos, he almost shot 50% on. Probably shot above 50% on twos. And then he shot 10 of 11 at the free throw line. If we can just slow these threes down, then he'll probably shoot better. He was really one of four at the end of the game. He, I was heat checking because we went on a 20 to eight run to close out the overtime. So we had the game wrapped up. And once he, you know, was hot, I'm like, let me just try to heat check and make some logo threes with him. He was missing. Um, we'll, we'll see as far as the three point shooting right now, he's still probably shooting around 40% or close to it from three. Yeah. So he's shooting 38% from three, but he's also shooting 47%, which is a career high from the field. He's, uh, he's doing his thing. So that's something to look out for. One thing that I will say is we are we are three games away from the All-Star break. As y'all can see right there, we have February 10th um, against the Rockets. Then we have the Bulls, and then we have the Hornets. After a big-time win against the Philadelphia 76ers, a type of win that I think rejuvenates your season, what I'm hoping in this episode is – before we get to this all-star break, we can win these three games. Like, I, I just don't see why we can't win these three games. We're home against the Rockets. We're home against the Bulls, who just made a bunch of deadline moves. So they don't look the same, as you can tell by their lineup. White, Daniels, DeRozan, Najee, and Valanchunas. We should beat this team. This team is playing for the lottery, okay? Um, and then the Hornets, same thing. Kyle Lowry, Brandon Miller. LaMelo is hurt right now. He just can't catch a break real life or on the video game. LaMelo Ball has a dislocated left patella. He's going to be out for two to four months. Another win that we should have. And then the Rockets, they'll probably be the toughest matchup. But after beating Philadelphia, I really think there's nobody in the league we can't beat. There's nobody in the league we cannot beat after winning a, a game like that in Philadelphia, by the way. That was not a home game. We were on the road. Went in there, fought back, went into overtime and did our thing. So that's the biggest thing. That's why this episode is so important, because we have to figure out somewhere around All-Star, somewhere in February, what are we doing? Are we fighting for a playoff spot? Are we having a second round, you know, turnaround? Or are we going to shut down Trey Young and let our young guys like Kobe Bufkin, Jalen Johnson really go out and get some get some reps as, as starters and Jalen Johnson can get some reps as the number one guy? Because right now... We're in a spot where we have to figure out what it's worth. It's not really worth trying to fight hard for a play-in spot because you got to understand, we can easily jump to Toronto. We can probably overtake the Bulls. But if we're doing that just to get in the playoffs, we're going to face the Celtics or the Cavs and get our ass bounced anyway. I would love to face the Cavs. I think the Cavs are a lot more reasonable and beatable than the Celtics. But really, prematurely speaking, a lot of these upper echelon teams would probably get us in a seven-game series. I don't know if we are ready for a seven-game series just yet. And something that I realized when I was looking at Trey Young and his shooting and everything was the left side, this left corner from three. That left corner three, right? Not Don't worry about it for Trey Young. But as I click through with some of our players that are supposed to be shooters, just watch how everybody's left corner is like non-existent. Brogdon, 16% from the left corner, 52% from the right corner. Obviously, Capella and Akongwa won't have nothing. Jalen Johnson, he's not much of our shooter. He's balanced on both, so I'm not really going to count him. Bogdan Bogdanovich, 38% there, 33% there, not bad. 
Not bad. He's taking a lot there. Matisse Thybul, 50% from the right, 27% from the left. Where's Quentin Grimes? 42% from the right, 26% from the left. It's in it, AJ, uh, AJ Griffin is the opposite. He's shooting one. He, he made his one three from there and the other side. He's just whatever. But like for Grimes, Brogdon, Thibel to be like our, our guys who just kind of are out there to make shots. And I know Brogdon can do a little bit more, but he's out there to be a shot maker too. That left corner is non-existent. Even our best three point shooters, they're not like killing it. They're, they're just I. Right. Bogdanovich and Trey Young are just all right from the from the left corner. We need we need to be able to make some shots from the left corner. That's just some random thing I noticed. Um, prospect scouting, something that I've been meaning to do the last couple of episodes. Right now, if you go to the mock drafts, they are projecting us to have the ninth overall pick. We have the ninth overall pick, 14th overall pick, and then we'll have 21 and 22. So we are potentially going to have two lottery picks and then two picks in the 20s which will give us four first round picks. I kind of like like where we at with those. Um, obviously, probably won't use every single pick. It's hard to bring in four rookies. Um, but just from a scouting standpoint, the ninth overall guy that they have up here um, or around this spot, we will be looking at guys like, you know, Ron Holland is still up here. Um, Kobe Walter is back here, even though I think he will go a lot higher. Our, our, st our scouting staff probably sucks. Reed Shepard, uh, Stefan Castle is up, up here. We're going to have some opportunities to get some guys is, is the point that I'm making. So it's going to be very interesting to see who can shape up and line up with us. I saw somebody in the comments saying we should look at Zach Eady. Don't know if I want to get a guy that slow because I think next year, as long as we keep in Trey Young, we're definitely going to take the pace and, and go up. We, gonna, we, we, we really... This is a guy that I like a lot. I think Ryan Dunn would be really, really nice. Defensive menace. Let's add him to our draft board. Um, I'm also liking the fact that, again, they got Stefan Castle back here. We'll add him to our draft board. Reed Shepard, add him to our, our draft board. Colby Walter, add him. Hopefully, he can fall. Ron Holland, maybe. It's hard to envision Ron Holland being with us because we have Jalen Johnson. I love Robert Dillon, Dillingham uh, to be a, a, some type of backup guard, maybe get some scoring. And then I would love for us to, if, if we got to the point to shut down Trey Young, Cody Williams would be my, my, my most desirable guy. I just feel like he's a, the type of wing that we would want long term. Having a core Trey Young, Jalen Johnson and a wing like Cody Williams to, to come in would be nice. Uh, Zachary Richardson, he's another good wing that I think of uh, compliment Trey Young. He's going to defend, don't need the basketball, prefers to play without the basketball, and can cut and shoot threes, you know what I'm saying, and give us size on that wing. So those are some guys I'm looking at. Obviously, the closer and closer that we get to um, draft day, the, uh, the more we'll look into some of these names and whatnot. But just off the top of my head, I'm loving Ryan Dunn. I think Kevin McCullough would be a good guy to add there as a um, – a veteran college player could probably come in from day one and, and, and offer something. Kwame Evans, a versatile defender. Um, it's, it's a lot of options out here. It's a lot of options. Before we dive into these games, the first thing we have to do is our random event generator. So I won't lie, I did the event generator a couple times because the first one they gave me, they wanted me to go into the injury report and they wanted me to take one of these players and bring their attributes down while they're hurt. And the title of the event was Can't Recover. So what that would have done, which uh, would have been when these guys get healthy, their attributes would have dropped. It would have stayed permanent. When you get hurt, your attributes drop because obviously you're hurt. But like you can go in there and really pull them down. So even when they recover, they still drop. I don't want to do that to LaMelo or Ja because they're the only two guys that are really hurt. You have to have an injury that's 60 days or more. And they're too young and exciting for me to go in and make their injuries like career threatening. It's kind, of, it's, it's to the point where they want it to be like he gets hurt and he's never the same. Like Derrick Rose knee injury. I don't want to do that to these guys. I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. And everybody else is just not significant enough to do that. So I went in. I put another random event, uh, random event generator thing in here. And this one was better. It's a, it's this G League standout. Select one two-way player, increase all of their shooting attributes, lay up close shot, mid-range, and three by five. 
put their offensive consistency by 10 and all of their other attri attributes by three. Increase shot and touch tendency by 10. This was a really good one. The only thing is it took me a couple times to find the right team. The first time I put the team in, it was the Pacers. The Pacers don't have any room for a standout all of a sudden. Like, just being honest, they don't have any room for anybody to become a standout. Where, where can the standout play? They barely got minutes for their um, their lottery pick, Jairus Walker. Now, all of a sudden, they get another guy. So then I did it again. And the next team it gave me was the Thunder. And I'm like, bro, again, same situation. The Thunder don't have room for a G League standout overnight to come in and go crazy. They just literally don't have minutes. And then I did it again, and we landed on the Detroit Pistons. And I was like, oh, thank you. Perfect. This is a team that definitely needs somebody who is a, a standout in the G League that can get some minutes. So we have uh, Malcolm Kazalan. Oh, Kaz Kazalan? Kazalan. <laughs> Kazalan? <laughs> I'm crazy. Kazalan. Kazalon. It might be Kazalon. I don't know. Uh, my, my, my pronunciation game ain't really that. We got Stanley. The Monday, which in real life, he had some games for the Pistons. I, I remember. I remember seeing this dude like, bro, who is this? And why he killing like that? You got Jerry Roden, uh, my boy from Seton Hall. Yes, my boy from Seton Hall. You got Kevin Knox. We can rejuvenate Kevin Knox. It looked like he's on a, no, he's not on a two-way. He's just playing G League for them. So I think the player, let's look at all of them from an attribute standpoint. He got, he got a 71-3. He has a. He's mad that he's in the G League. So his progression or his overall is dropping because he's pissed. Where is his move? I feel he did with everything. I hate that in 2K. They got to fix that. Guys really be getting pissed and they overall go down because they're playing in the G League. But it's like, bro, there's no way that this dude don't think he should be in the G League. Like he has to have some type of understanding. There's no understanding on 2K. Guys go to the G League and they just be pissed. So, uh the other guy, he ain't pissed. I might put my, I might put his shit up because he's not pissed. And what about Jerry Roden? See, he's pissed too. I feel aggro with everything that's been happening. Right. So let's let's I'm content. Let's let's spin our let's 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 use this on bro. Since he's not pissed and his attributes will actually go up and stay with the team, we go, we're gonna do that. So it said to give him a plus five, I believe, to every so it wants to get a plus five on layup. Close, a plus five on close shot. Mid range, right? Yep. And then his three point shot. Now he's a three point threat. And offensive consistency by 10. Offensive consistency goes up to a 60. And all the other attributes by three. So everything else that we didn't touch goes up by three. So standing dunk, three, driving dunk, three, close mirror. We did free throws by three. Post hook. That boy got a post hook now. They gonna drug test him. They gonna be like, boy, you been with Tristan Thompson? What you doing? Uh <laughs> ball ball handle by three. Speed with ball by three. Hands by three. This is actually dope. I didn't know that this was a uh, one of the things that you can do in the event generator. I didn't know that they had this. This dude is about to be a monster now. The, the And the Pistons need this. Shout out to them for having a random teams. Because I'm, yeah, I'm usually stuff like this is like you do it to your team. This is only stuff that applies to your team, which I was saying in the intro. Like, I definitely want to focus on my team and we definitely going to focus on my team. But it's good to have other stuff around the league where you can see stuff like this so boom confirm now what also what i'm gonna do even though they didn't tell me to do it i'm gonna call him up so the, the way i call him up is added player contract where's that contract at where that contract at where that contract at go down here how many days he has left 45 Let's do that, and then let's bring him up. Yeah, let's bring him up. And now he playing real minutes. And yeah, I should also, this is what else I'm gonna do. Shout out to y'all again in the comments. They told me, P, take control of all 30 teams. 
and make all of the stuff CPU, like go in the settings and change it to where you don't have to be responsible. And I'm like, oh, duh. Cause I'm like, bro, I don't like the way that the rotations that 2K uses. We're gonna take Killian Hayes minutes. Well, how many minutes did Killian Hayes had? Uh, let's take this shit down to 15. Alec Burks go to 25. Ivy, you go to 28, 32. 27 and let's get homie where you at where you go Monte Moore's you sit out they gonna let you go after this year anyway Brody getting 15 minutes I should give him all the Killian Hayes minutes that's yeah Killian Hayes sit out sit down so somewhere for a second bro and let's and we'll 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 just watch we'll we'll check on him and see what he's doing while we simulate our games. That just I added thing to, to bring to the to the uh, association. But yeah, I, real quick, real quick. I'm sorry, real quick. I know we got to get to these games, but real quick, this was this is the guy that made me say, you know what? I need to control all of these teams. Every time I would go in, because what I did was I took control of all 30 teams. I changed their lineups just to try to make it real, and give guys who are playing minutes actually minutes. And um, and matter of fact, Bagley should be playing like. Both of these two can play 25. And that'll give more minutes to. You mean like Johnny Davis? He has a flame next to his name. You know why? Because he's been playing 30 minutes a game. He was playing minutes, and then this guy was getting DMPs. Like, look, let's look at his, let's look at Bilal's last few games. Look. Out of nowhere. He he just they just said, you know what? And this is after the I made the Kuzma trade, and they decided, hey, yeah, he ain't gonna play no more. No more minutes for him. And so then I put him back in the lineup, and then the CPU took back control of the team, and then instantly back to DMPs. Back to the matter at hand. The the the, the main focal point is these next three games, y'all. We need to go on a winning streak. We need to get an understanding of what we're gonna do. I'm gonna simulate with Simcast just because. These are a lot of games. All right, here we go. Houston Rockets. We gonna Simcast in case I need to jump in. I don't want to play these all these whole games, but in case I got to jump in for us, I'm, I'll, I'll be here. We at home. We doing our thing. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's run away with it. Oh, man. Let's run away with it, Trey. We got to jump in, y'all. We got to jump in. Last, last 423. I just want to get a, every time I jump in, I like to get a somewhat of an update on what's going on. So first and foremost, you always got to go to fouls. Anybody fouled out? No. Anybody fouled out for them? No, but Jabbar has five. Cool. So their guys has been killing it hot for them. Shingoon, obviously. Jalen Green is having a cool game. Freddie is 17, five and two. Okay. He's doing his thing. All around team effort from them. Trey Young is doing Trey Young things. Brogdon is being cool. A combo, double, double, Grimes. So Jalen Johnson has only taken four shots. I'm gonna have to put his. Uh, that's what I gotta do for the Malcolm guy too. I gotta put his shot tendency up. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing for Jalen Johnson. Okay, cool. We got f we down five. Is it Mother's Day or something? What's up with that? With all this stuff on the scoreboard, flowers and whatnot. Come through, come through, come on, Bogey. We need you. Come on, Bogey. Oh, well, it's always missing when I'm playing, which I always fucking missing, man. Then the stats say you you out here shoot. There you go. Get a, make a play. There you go. Come on. Let him foul you. Yes, and one. Fifth foul for Jalen Green. New rocket. That's Jalen Green. Shout out to my boy Mike Ben here. Quentin Grimes going to the scores table. We did make a lineup change, y'all. We did make a lineup change. Quentin Grimes is now a starter. Malcolm Brogdon got moved to the bench. Just just something that I think could be better for the team. Malcolm Brogdon, when I played, you got to get through that, Trey. Run that floor. Run that floor. Move him out your way. There's no way. Oh, that's Dylan Brooks. Thought that was Fred Van Vliet. They all light-skinned looking alike. Come on, Trey. Ah. Trey Young should be making a lot more threes for us. And I was talking to somebody in the comments that was saying that. Get through. You there. You there. 
Oh, wow. Non-existent foul. Because that's all he's going to do is foul. Look how he just threw him to the ground. We took some of uh, Matisse Thibault minutes away, too. He's a 20-minute guy now. He got to start producing offensively. Illegal screen. Set screen out of bounds. They just be making up shit, y'all. I'm going to go. I'm gonna control Jalen Johnson since he got the turnover. Come on, y'all. This is a win a bowl game at home. Winnable game. We just beat the Philadelphia 76ers. Good D, Quinn Grimes. Push. He's on the floor. Push, 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 push. There you go, Trey. No way. No way. No way. No way. That's that, that's that size shit I'm talking about. No, I love Fred, but no way Trey Young just missed that layup. And then we give up a layup. Good D. Good D. You got it, Jay. Great pass. Good putback. Jalen Johnson, cold shit. Jabari, we try to get Jabari a six foul. Good putback, Akamu. 13-13. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Come on, one more stop. Two stops in a row. Two stops in a row. You got help right there. Good defense, Quinn Grimes. Akamu, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 Shingoon, man. That is Shingoon. That is Shingoon. That's what he does. Good bucket. Good bucket, Akonwu. Good bucket. Right back at him. Battle of the bigs. Battle of the bigs. You through. Get through, Grimes. Matisse Thibel. Matisse Thibel, you got to get through, brother. And one. Yep. Too slow. Too slow, Trey. We ain't got to settle for threes. Trey, you gotta have you got to have 30 for us to win. You got to have 30 for us to win. Lock in. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Season on the line right here. He threw. He threw, Jalen. Yep, get back. Fight through. Fight through. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. There we go. We solid. He ain't shooting from out there, Trey. He ain't shooting from right there, though. Get through. Get through. Get through. Get through. Yes, you back. You back. No, Trey Young. You got to be able to stay attached, brother. That's the next phase for you. We cannot switch you off of Fred. You can't guard Fred. Shit, we in trouble. Two man game. Come in. We're going for it because I trust you. We going for it. I trust you, Trey. Atlanta. Stand up. Stand up. What we'll loot at? Stand up. Come on. Look at that. At the bottom of the ticker. Kalabali, 21 and 7. Same dude that they was giving DMPs to. Come on, y'all. That's a big shot, Trey. I told you you was gonna need 30. You might need 35. We might need one more of those. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Take that away. Take that away. No way. It's just no way. It cannot be that easy, Trey. It's okay. We're in a bonus. We are in a bonus. It cannot be that easy though. Shit. They ain't have to work for that. Great play. Yes. Yes. We can get us an easy one too. That two man game gonna bring something to Atlanta. That two man game gonna bring something to Atlanta. Next year we're gonna get this shit polished down. This time around next year, we're going to be a top four seed in the East. Mark my words. With those two, we, we own to something. That, that's, that's, that's my Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire right there. We're going we gonna to fill in these blanks real, real good. I promise you that. Come on. Who took that shot? Oh, Jalen Johnson. I got to control him. Get through. Get through. Get through. Akonwu, we do not need you to foul. They holding for the last shot. Akonwu, we do not need you to foul. Brother. Fight through Trey. Fight through Trey. Sh yep, showing that for him, Jalen Johnson. You good? Quentin Grimes, man. 
You, you, you had him, brother. You had him. Come on. It's 1.9. Maybe Trey Young can save your ass again, man. But golly, bro. That was great defense for 22 seconds. Can't even be mad at a con. Well, he got to stay on Sengun. Sengun can make jumpers. You supposed to you out there to defend. Young from outside. Oh. Let's go. Trey Young. Trey fucking Young. Trey Young. I told you you was going to need to make another one. It's cold out here. Stand up. MVP qualities, man. MVP qualities. That boy's special, man. That boy's special. Let's go, man. Let's go. That's that's my Trey Young fighting for this season. He don't want to be shut down. Trey Young is fighting for this season. Shout out to the Rockies. They play hard. That man, that is a great win. That is a great win, man. Damn, that's a good ass win. That's what we have to do the rest of the way, man. We have to show that we, we it, this is worth fighting for. Trey Young, man. In that fourth quarter, 13 points, four assists, zero turnovers, six and nine for Conwood. That's underrated. Jalen Johnson did his thing. Good win, man. That's a good win. So we fighting. At all of these wins and all of these games, man, they are our season is on the line for all of these games, man. I don't know why I put us on the, the Spurs, but we got two more. We got a day of rest, another home game against Chicago. Here we go. Another one against the Bulls at home. This is one that I'm, I'm hoping I don't have to jump into. I'm hoping we can just dominate them. And, of course, we started off slow. We got to get this lead and pull away, man. Please, they're pulling away. They're dogging us, y'all. Holy shit. I'm going to jump in again. We down nine points with three minutes left to the Bulls. They had a 43-point second quarter. Who is killing us? DeRozan, Lonnie Walker, and, and Kobe White. Sit Oh my gosh, is anybody doing anything for us? Jalen Johnson, two of 12, one of five, man. Damn. It's the Trey Young show. Shout out to Quentin Grimes, he's stepping up. Five boards for my center. He's getting out rebounded by their, their shooting guard. Here we go. Nine points, three minutes left. We, we, we need heroics. We need heroics. Chicago, go pass his ass. DeRozan Float that in there for me, please, Trey. Thank you. We just going to, we, we might one four flat this one the whole way through, y'all. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. We need stops, and we need them fast. We got Jalen Johnson out here at center. That's me. I'm looking at the scores table. Push, 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 push. Come here. Somebody come here. Come on, Jalen. Come on, come on. Cook, Trey. Cook, Trey. Come on. Seven point game, two and a half minutes to go. We got to get some stops. It's about getting these stops right here. You through, you through, Trey. Hands up. Who is that? Oh, Najee Marshall. Yes. Hold him right there. We want him to score. Make him score. Help Trey. Help Trey. Help Trey. Help Trey. He's too small. He's too small, and we we just be we just be locked in on anybody, bro. Literally locked in. Yeah, call this play again, Quinn Snyder. You on the same type of time as me. Come on. Come on. Then we can't generate shit. Get in there, Trey. Nope. Nope. Because it's 20% contested. Because he's what? 6-1? Maybe? If that? So everything he does is just heavily contested. And he can't contest shit. Look at that, man. They just be working his ass. And this is a must win. This is a team that just, they just throwing out a, a lineup, man. Block shot. That's the same, that's the same play we would go down there. Good, thank you. Give me my ball back. It's the same play they would go down there and do to us and get a foul. Now, he just cleanly blocked it. You got to be shitting me, 2K. Get him open, please. Thank you, Quentin Grimes. Thank you. Get him open. First three times we ran, and y'all barely touched anybody. We couldn't even get nobody open. Come on, yep. Just 
run right past him. Get through Trey, get through Trey, get through Trey. They're just going right at him. Good help putting grinds because Dyson Daniels about to make a shot today. Yeah, we live with Najee. Holy, 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 holy. There it is. No, no, no miraculous comeback today. Ain't no buzzer beater today. Lonnie Walker, 25 points in 25 minutes, five for five from three. Six, 26 boards from Dyson Daniels and Valanchunas. Ben gave you eight boards and seven assists in 20 minutes. This is a decent team, bro. When I think about it, I don't know why. I thought we were just going to go in there and walk right over them. Them dudes came out in the hoop. They, they fighting for the playoffs, too. We number 10, though. We we got in front of the Rockets. We're half, in, half a game above the Rockets. If we would have won that game, we'd be 26. We'd be above the Bulls. Finally, we get a scouting trip. This this is exactly what I've been waiting on. Uh, we get nine guys that we can go and scout and see how they're doing. Uh, Nikola Topic, obviously, we don't need him because we have Trey Young. We're going to look at Cody Williams, uh, Zachary Richishar. We're also going to look at uh, Kobe Wal Jacoby Walter, Reed Shepard, Stefan Castle. Who else do I want to look at? I want to look at um, hmm. who are some guys that I think are worth looking at. <laughs> My boy Ryan Dunn from Virginia. Tidion Salon. Saloon. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I really got to start. I, I got to focus on wings, man. We need some wing guys who can who can do some things, man. I'm so tired of getting getting beat by just anybody. We need somebody with some pride out here, man. And they ain't shit in this draft class that's like wowing me. Kwame Evans, come on. We'll invite Ron Holland too, since we got one. Yeah, they not let. Oh, he's already 100% scouted. Oh, uh, I love Tyler Smith for the G League night. So let's look at him. Here we go, man. This, uh, man, I better not have to jump in this game. Yes, run away, run away, and y'all letting them back in the game. Please, please, thank you. Bury him, bury him, bury him, bury him, bury him, bury him. 106 to 83. That's an incredible win, y'all. That's what we should have. Oh man. 28 and 10 from Trey again. Jalen Johnson back on track. Brogdon had a nice game. Quentin Grimes, whatever. Buffkin is getting some run and doing his thing. Okay. Thibel. Good defense, I guess, Thibel. Kong, well, I want to start seeing you get double-doubles more, bro. You got to start getting double-doubles. And now we into the all-star break, y'all. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight days of rest before we have to get back into it against the Raptors, who is a very beatable team. The Magic are going to be tough. I might play this one. This might be our TV, our nationally televised game that I play in front of y'all in episode five. We might do the Magic because yeah, everything else is kind of eh. the Jazz ain't worth it. The new look, the new look, new look Nets might be interesting to, to see how they how they are. I wonder how they last few games been. They they lost to the Celtics. Cam Thomas doing his thing. He had 35. Damn. And then before we dip out, before we close out, Daily View. What on Pistons that, man? All right. Now let's look. Where the Pistons go again? Let's look at them. That game should be done. The Pistons, they lost by 10. But our boy, his ass ain't do nothing. He has six rebounds, two assists, and a steal, but he missed every shot. What about this game? They played against the Lakers. They beat the Lakers. The Pistons beat the Lakers. And what our boy do on a nationally televised stage? Nothing. Two points, three rebounds. He only taking two shots. You know why? Because I never went in and put up his tendency. So let's go to the Detroit Pistons before I get his touches. Go up by 10. And his shot tendency. Go up by 10. There it is, y'all. That's a wrap for episode four. I need y'all help. This is what I want y'all to do. This is y'all homework. Hopefully, a lot of y'all made it this far. Y'all, I need y'all in the comments to really think about everything that y'all know about this team thus far. We do have an entire second half of the season to go. Y'all tell me, is it really worth with this group of guys trying to make a playoff push, play-in push, and get to the playoffs to, to fight one of those teams, or 
do we can our season, rest and shut down Trey Young, allow our young guys to get minutes, and just try to tank for one of those top picks so we can get – right now they got to project it at nine. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can get up to six, five. You know what I'm saying? Oh, who knows? Or do we just thug it out and say, hey, we got regardless, we got four picks anyway, so just play. Y'all let me know y'all feedback. I'll take it into consideration. Um, as always, I appreciate y'all. We got a lot of work to do. This season has been tough. But it's your boy, Pee Wee the Plug. I'm out. Peace.